So I recently got a new laptop for work. I've been using the ThinkPad T480s since I started at Red Hat in 2018. And so it was time for a, a laptop refresh, which we do around every three years. So I, I was a little bit overdue. Um, so I originally put in a request to get an X1 Carbon. We get to basically choose the, the laptop we want. So you can choose from other ThinkPads or MacBooks, etc. Um, I chose the X1 Carbon and they ended up sending me the Gen 4 P1 which I was actually I was a little bit surprised and a little bit hesitant to start with because it's quite a big laptop there, a big 15 inch laptop, but I've actually been pleasantly surprised. It's actually a really good laptop. It's got 64 gig of RAM, a, a nice big 4K screen. Um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't be more happy with this laptop so far. It's actually been really good. But one of the first things I need to do when I get a new laptop is obviously install Fedora. So they come pre-installed with, with RHEL Workstation. Um, I, I'm a Fedora user, I don't use the, the RHEL install that comes with them. So the first thing I needed to do was download Fedora. I downloaded Fedora 36, the beta version, installed it, and then you know, you've got to go through and set it all up how you like it. So the way I've done that is I've leveraged an Ansible role, well, several Ansible roles, and I wanted to share with you guys the Fedora base role that I use to configure the base things, you know, just the, the baseline stuff I need on any install of Fedora to then build upon. So I use three roles, as I said, I import this Fedora base one first, it executes everything, then a Fedora work role and a Fedora personal role. So the personal one, for example, will install Spotify and Telegram flat packs. Um, the work one will install uh, VS Code, Git clone in a bunch of Git repositories that I work with in my day to day. So I, I can't show the, the work one in, in a video because there's a lot of stuff that is internal stuff and I don't think I should be putting it on YouTube, like setting up VPNs and um, you know configuration for certain servers internally. But I will definitely show the Fedora base one. And basically what I've done for the other two is just iterate on that. I've used basically the same structure and just replace variables with things that I need for work. So this is the laptop I'm talking about. It's quite quite big. It's got a a good size screen, nice 4K, the speaker's pretty good. I've got it plugged into the dock and I'm actually recording this video on it right now. It's at 64 gig of RAM, so like it's got more RAM than the desktop PC I, I generally use to, to do this. And I just wanted to see how it goes recording a video and editing a video and uploading it to YouTube. So let's switch over to my terminal. So this is the Git repository for the role. So the very first thing that we're going to have here is, well, actually look at the inventory file. So I've just manually created a YAML inventory file for Ansible, giving it the IP address. Now I'm going to run this against a virtual machine that I've created on my server so that we can see how it works and see it configure a system from scratch. And then we set the strict host key checking to no because I want to use password authentication and the user I set up is toast. So then in the... The deploy file, I just have the host I'm going to be running it against, which is the virtual machine, gather facts would be true, and then including the role. So when I do this for my work laptop, for example, I just have a, more, more roles down here, like role Fedora work, for example. So that then includes all the stuff from here. We have a look at tasks, main. First thing that happens is we install some RPMs. Now I've got two different variables for doing this so that we can maintain a base RPMs and then anything extra you might want to install. And um, basically how I use this is I have a defaults directory and then in that a main file that has all the default variables and then I override them as necessary in a vars file, which I'll show soon. Then we call in this render configs, which renders some Jinja 2 templates like vimrc, um, zshrc and my terminal stuff. And then we set up the themes that I'm using. So this terminal theme, for example, um, the font styles. So I'm using a, a node mono font called Hack. Um, sets up all the GNOME stuff. So you might have seen in my videos that I traditionally use GNOME and Plasma. In this case, because it's my work laptop, I'm just using GNOME. So I'm only going to set up the, the GNOME stuff in this base class here today. So we take a look at the variables I was talking about. We have a defaults directory and main. So you can see I have base RPMs. This installs base RPMs required for this role to work at all. 
and then some extra RPMs here like GNOME tweaks for example so that I can manually change things with the GUI instead of using G settings or DCONF. Um, I use overpass mono fonts, uh, papyrus icons, the breeze cursor which is the cursor from KDE, Vim Powerline, just a few things that I want to use. Then we have this base managed configs. Now this is an example of a variable that I will be overriding in my, my variables class, just so I can show an example of what that looks like. So basically it's a dictionary. In that dictionary, I have other dictionaries for VimRC, for example. So its name is VimRC. The template it uses is VimRC J2. And the destination I want to render that to. So we'll see how that works soon. And then base git repos. So this is something I expand upon in my work role where I get cloning in Python triplo client, triplo heat templates, triplo common, triplo ansible, a whole bunch of OpenStack stuff along with some OpenShift things as well. In this case though, I just want to get cloned in the P10K uh, theme for my, my bash, uh, ZSH prompt. And then the GNOME settings that I'm using. So this will set the theme, um, set the color scheme. So with Libid Waiter in, in um, Fedora 36, I'm preferring dark. So all the default things will open with that dark theme. Yeah, that's basically it. So let's have a look at the VARS one. So here we can see I'm overriding a few of those, those base ones we just looked at. Um, in this case, I'm adding in the terminal. So I'm um, writing in my terminal preferences there. So we do d, d conf dump. So it's basically just that. I just put that into a file and then I'm rendering it into wherever I I want to set this up. So it pulls in all my colors, for example, the colors of you know how how my terminal is colored, what syntaxes are colored in, in what format. Background transparency, custom command is ZSH obviously. Yeah, that's basically it. So, um, yeah, the first thing that gets pulled in is this configs YAML file. So, here's what I'm talking about where we iterate over that dictionary. So, we do a lookup on the dictionary, base manage configs, and then we item value template is our source, and item value destination is where we want to write that out to, and then we're just setting the mode on those, those files as we write them. So, the second thing we do is the themes. So, we have a look at the themes here. So, we set the wallpaper. Uh, so we get cloned in the repositories first, so obviously when I do this for my work one, this takes quite a long time, so I've set up async there and then we just poll it to see when it finishes. Set the wallpaper, so that is this wallpaper that I'm using here. I've been using it for a while, so I'll set that up on the VM as well. Um, then we're going to check if some directories already exist, so if I'm you know, rerunning this and it finds that those directories exist, it doesn't need to re-download the, the theme for example. So then we create the directories if they don't exist, otherwise downloading something to it is not going to work. We download and extract the theme in this block, so download the theme, uh, register the result, then we unarchive it, and then we clean up the temporary directory when finished. We download our fonts, extract them, then we set our terminal theme, so this is a little bit um, nasty at the moment using the shell. I haven't found a way to deconf load using the deconf Ansible module. Maybe that's a patch we can propose to fix that. Um, so yeah, for the moment I'm just using the shell module to do that. And then set the theme. So again we go through and we get the dictionary for base gnome settings and we just iterate over key value pairs to set them for my theme. So I think at this point let's run it against my VM. So we do playbook, uh, I need to go back to directory, password is just test for this VM. So I've actually already executed this role against this VM so that it would speed things up a bit, but to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. Obviously when I run it for the first time, a lot of these will be changed, like that one for example. Looks like I don't have a when statement on that because the theme should actually already exist, so it shouldn't have been changed. So that's something that I can fix a little bit. Same for fonts, I think. And so, in the final thing now, setting the GNOME theme. So, we'll take a look at this VM once this finishes and have a look at what's changed. Okay, so we have a look at the VM now. So this is a terminal that I opened before running it. So if I open a new one now, I would expect to not have bash. So this is obviously bash. If I do new window. So we can see there that it's using ZSH now, which is what we want. And we can see that we have syntax highlighting. 
which is cool. The only thing I haven't done yet is I've changed my work laptop to use OMIZSH after I run this role and I haven't taken those changes and put them into this role yet so it's expecting directories that don't exist from my ZSHRC file at the moment. So the other thing that we've got here is in tweaks, if we have a look here now. I haven't given this VM any resources so it's a little bit slow. So you can see there we've set the cursor theme, we can see the cursor within the VM is the same as my cursor outside the VM. Papyrus icons, the Dracula Sir GTK theme, which is this one here that Tweaks is appearing in. So that will be for legacy applications, but if we look at something like the appearance app, this will be the new Libid Waiter and it should be in the dark Libid Waiter theme. So you can see there that one is preferring dark and that is the new dark Libid Waiter theme there. So that's it for the role. So I, I would just wanted to introduce you guys to this because I think it's something that could be useful for a lot of people that, that watch my videos or are interested in you know, not manually configuring themes. It's something I enjoyed a lot a few years ago, but it's something I just kind of want done for me now. So this role is really handy for that. Um, if you guys want to use it, feel free to get cloned. I'll leave the link below and you can use it for whatever you want. If you do want to make modifications to it, I'd encourage you to send send a PR back to the, the main project and I will review that and merge it in so that everyone can benefit from that. The only thing I would suggest is that I've set up Molecule. So we go back here into Fedora Base and Molecule. Default. So we've set up a Molecule file here so we can run Molecule tests on this. It basically pulls in the Fedora 36 container image and then we go and we apply all those changes within the container. So we look at the prepare file for example, just setting up a, a user, adding them to the sudo is file and creating a couple of fake directories. So this is so if we want to uh, test things with non-root user, which by, the, by default it is using the root user, but I added this in case we do want to add non-root user tests. And converge. So basically just providing the variables here instead of having them in those those files so that we can make it a little bit quicker for base repos we're just base rpms we're just pulling in the rpms we need to run these molecule tests and nothing additional you can see i'm overriding those dictionaries there so yeah if you want to make changes to it then you would just cd into the main directory so fedora base and then molecule test and once that has passed, feel free to um, send me a pull request on GitHub and I will be happy to take a look, discuss any modifications or enhancements you want to add to it and we can look at merging it. So that's all I wanted to go over, just a really quick one to show how I'm setting up new installs of Fedora so that I don't have to do things manually. Um, and as I said, I, I expand on that a little bit. Maybe I can look at going into my work one a bit in the future. I might be able to censor a few things out. I think in the Fedora base one, I've, I've used a few interesting Ansible techniques that hopefully people can learn something from if they're not familiar with those techniques like lookups and iterating over dictionaries, turning dictionaries into lists, etc, etc. And I think I've used some pretty good Ansible practices as well, like referring to the um, fully qualified name for each of those modules, like Ansible built-in shell, for example. Um, if, if you're someone who wants to do the RHCE, I think there's probably a decent amount of value in taking a look at this and trying to improve on it for your own purposes because the RHCE is very heavy in Ansible at the moment. Or if, even if you're just someone who is using Red Hat OpenStack Platform or Triple O, we're very heavy on, Ans on Ansible and hopefully these kind of things will help you to become more familiar with Ansible and improve your experience with the overall product. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me below. I'm happy to discuss anything that you want to discuss. And that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it.